welcome to our Bible study for this week and the very focus of our study is uh, lesson 10. The title is Jesus opens the way through the hill. And uh, the focus of our study is found in Hebrews chapter 10, 19 to 22. If you have your Bible, kindly read with me Hebrews chapter 10, 19 to 22. It says here, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. We come to verse 21, and having a high press over the house of God, let us draw near with true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That is in Hebrews chapter 10, 19 to 22. And part of our study is the very text for our memory text for this week. I hope that we find time to really internalize these verses. Although by a glance, it's hard, no? it's a deep theology that was written during the time of Paul, but we'd like to glean some important practical lessons from this text. The memory text is found in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Okay, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. Can you memorize? It says, For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now appear to the presence of God for us. The background of this is uh, about the sanctuary that was instructed during the time of Israel. And it has a very important meaning, not only during their time, but it looks forward to the final sacrifice, and that is Jesus Christ. And in the sanctuary, we have the two, uh, the two apartments, and the holy and the most holy place. And then in between, we have the veil. So that's the background of these uh, verses that we read from the book of Hebrews. But we are so interested, especially, in the practical implication of these passages. What are the practical implications of these passages that will inspire us as we continue on serving God? First, let us look at the word veil or the curtain in the simple word. There is a curtain, the veil. The veils in the old sanctuary have a double function. In fact, when we try to look at in, in the term used in the book of Hebrews, it is uh, the meaning is that it could refer to the screen of the court. So in that court, there are two uh, parts. Then the curtain is the separation. The screen at the entrance of the outer apartment of the sanctuary, or the inner veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. You could refer that a reference is found in Exodus 26, 31, 35. So I'd like to invite to extend your imagination about the sanctuary, the earthly sanctuary that was instructed during the time of Israel. It's all communicating how God would save his people. So this is an offering with animals and the priest working. And then uh, once a year, the, high, the priest will enter in the most holy place. But in the two apartments, there are, safe, there are a boundary. There is a boundary and that is by the veil. Okay? So the veil was a, a, a protection for the priest as the minister before the holy God. After the scene of the golden calf, God said to Moses that he would not accompany them in the way 
to the promised land lest he consume them because they were stiff-necked people. Thus Moses moved the tent of meeting and pitched it far off outside the camp. After Moses interceded, however, God agreed to go with them in the, their midst, but he established several measures to protect his people as he dwelled among them. So this is from our lesson as quarterly. Look at the very practical implication of these verses. Hebrews 10, 19, 22, just simply telling us that Jesus is the living way to the presence of God. The same as the priest will enter and the congregation are praying. Now it's not a fulfillment of that ceremony. Jesus, according to the book of Hebrews, that Jesus is the promised Messiah, is the final offering, and Jesus is the living way to the presence of God. Sin barred us to enter to the presence of God. The same as the experience of Moses. With the sin, they cannot really see the presence of God. It's now the barrier. So Jesus is the living way to the presence of God. We enter to the presence of God by means of veil, by the flesh of Jesus Christ. We enter into the presence of God by means of the veil before the Holy of Holies. In the tabernacle hung the screen of the presence of God. But praise God that due, through the flesh of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died for us. That's why when he died at the cross, then the veil, the curtain, tore apart. Because no more the, the veil is the way and that is Jesus Christ. And his sacrifice, his death could make us an access to the presence of God. So what does the veil represent in the sanctuary? It's the boundary between God and man. It represents Christ that God, God, man. He is God, but he became a man. Who well, only through his blood, he will be the way to God. Again, I'd like to repeat, only in Jesus Christ, he will be the way to God. That's why Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man can come to the Father without me. And that is Jesus. You cannot come to the Father by just striving to become good. You need the, 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 the somebody to tore the veil. And Jesus is now the way. He, passed, he made it through the veil that we can have access to God the Father. Jesus as our press has been our veil through his incarnation. God pitched his tent in our midst and made it possible for us to contemplate his glory according to John 1, 14 to 18. And it made it possible for a holy God to live in midst of an imperfect people. That is Jesus. So Jesus as our, our press has also been our veil through his incarnation. God pitched his tent in the midst and made it possible for us to contemplate in his glory. For man to enter, the veil should be torn apart. For man to enter in the presence of the Holy God, the veil should be torn apart. Jesus' place is what filled the Godhead. Jesus is the living way to the presence of God. We enter into the presence of God by means of the veil, and that is by the flesh of Jesus Christ. And you know, in the very introduction of our lesson, it started with telling us that when Jesus ascended to heaven, and when the disciples returned from Mount of olives right after jesus had ascended to heaven they were filled with joy and triumph why because their master and friend had ascended to a position of power over the world and had invited them to approach god 
in His name with the absolute confidence that God would respond favorably to their prayers. That's why we pray in Jesus' name. He is now the access to our God of Father. So when he was successful in giving the final offering, when he was crucified in the cross and praise God, he died but the tomb is empty, meaning that we have hope of eternal life and he is now ministering in our behalf. That's the joy that the disciples had. And finally, as being communicated in the sanctuary that somebody will come that will turn the, the, the partition between God the Father and man and Jesus through the veil. And so they continued in the world. Although the disciples were attacked of forces of evil, their hope was strong. They knew that Jesus had ascended to prepare a place for them. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I will intercede in your behalf. My offering made me as a bell, as a way throughout the bell, through the bell. Ah, my flesh was torn that the bell may be gone and I am the way. I am the way, the truth and the life. They knew that Jesus was the captain of their salvation and that he had opened the way into the heavenly homeland through his blood. So Jesus is the only who can truly, really cleanse us from our sin. It was when the flesh of Christ was rent upon the cross that man really saw God. Who is God? And when he saw Jesus Christ as sacrifice, then they saw and they understand who is really God. It was in the cross that God's love really was revealed. The great controversy between God and Satan, the accusation that God is no good, God is not love. God is a God who requires something that man could not do. But when Jesus Christ was hung on the cross, now they fully understood the how loving God is, a true picture of God. So we already simplified the verses that we read. It's just simply telling us that the book of Hebrews argues that Jesus has entered into the heavenly sanctuary and invites you invites me to follow his lead. This idea agrees with the conception introduced before Jesus is the captain and a forerunner of believers. The new and living way. When Jesus made the sacrifice, is now the new and the living way towards salvation. Jesus provides the new total access to the presence of God opens the way, opens the way through the veil means Jesus is the high priest. Jesus is the high priest over God's house in heaven. In the sanctuary, the function of the priest was to build the bridge between man and God. He opens the way through the veil means that he not only shows the way to God, but he also introduces us to the very presence of God when we get there someday. So oh, what a beautiful message of Paul in the book of Hebrews, especially in that chapter. It's all convincing people, no other way to salvation. The, the veil represented in the practice of the old the sanctuary, it is now being fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Christ's ascension to heaven was the signal that his followers were to receive the promised blessing. He ascended now, and this is now the signal for us that we have hope of eternal life. When he was successful in redeeming us from our sin, for this they were to wait before they entered upon their work. When Christ passed within the heavenly gates, as written in the book uh, 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 Acts of Apostles, when Christ passed within the heavenly gates, as being described, he was enthroned amidst adoration of angels. Just imagine, as soon as their ceremony was completed, 
the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples in a rich currents, and Christ was indeed glorified, even with the glory he had with the Father from all eternity. The Pentecostal outpouring was heaven's communication that the Redeemer's inauguration was accomplished. According to his promise, he had sent the Holy Spirit from heaven to his followers as a token that he had as present king received all authority in heaven and on earth and was then wended over his people. And he could now speak the name of Jesus with assurance. Quoted from the Acts of Apostles, pages 38 to 46 and 46. So I hope that you picture the very essence of our study this afternoon. I came across of what the feeling of David, especially about his longing for God. Open your Bibles to Psalm 42, verse 2. Many could memorize this. In fact, some made this as a song, as a lyric of the song. Psalm 42, verse 2. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. I'll make it clear to myself and for you. My, according to David, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? He, was a, he had a great longing, Oh God, when shall I appear before you? Jesus Christ opens the way through the veil that we can come to the presence of God. That we can come to the presence of God. Jesus opens the way through the veil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are not hopeless. He opens the way that we can come to the presence of God. We are sinners, but we will be clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ because of the great offering. So I hope that the same as the psalmist, I hope that you long to be in the presence of God. I'd like to end this study by asking a question. Do you long to be in the presence of God? Do you enjoy to be in the presence of God? Today, we come to the presence of God through prayer, through worship, through singing. Do you enjoy that? Examine yourself. Examine myself. I'll examine myself. When I come to worship God, do I enjoy, do I long to worship that, that living God? Oh, my soul thirsts for the presence of God. How long shall I be in the presence of God? How can we have the same thirst to come into the presence of God? If we don't rejoice now, if you, an individual, don't rejoice praying to God, if you, as an individual, don't rejoice to worship God, if you don't rejoice now in the presence of God as we worship Him and come before His presence in faith, will we rejoice in the future? What are the factors that lead to joy before God? I hope that we develop now to enjoy and to rejoice in the presence of God. I hope that you thirst for God. As Jesus Christ said, Blessed is he who thirsts and hunger for the presence of God. He is now the way. He made an access for us. He paved the way that we can come to the presence of God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus opens the way through the veils. And we are so thankful. And we are so happy that we have hope of eternal life. That's the very core of our study for this week. Beautiful study. I hope that you enjoy. I hope that you got something beautiful that is actually a question of life and death. And the life and death there is eternal life and eternal death. What's your decision? Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Thank you, Lord, that you paved the way. You have given us an access 
that in spite of our sin that we cannot be in the presence of God. But you have, you paved the way, the sin that veiled the presence of God, you have broken it, and that through you, you are the way, the truth, and life. Help us, Lord, to make a decision every day to accept you as our personal Savior. I pray kindly bless each one of us, especially to those who listen to this preaching, to this study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.